Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here. So today I'm going to be filming a video talking about books over 600 pages. Now, I've read a lot of books um, on my Goodreads and what I've done is I've organised the books on my red shelf on Goodreads to show the books with the most pages and I've gone for 600 pages plus, which is 15 books and so I'm going to be talking about the biggest books that I have read. So the first one is one I read, um, I've read twice according to Goodreads but I know I've read it more than that. Um, I read it April... 2015 and then in February 2017 and that is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by JK Rowling. This is the sixth book in the Harry Potter series which has seven books altogether as most of you will probably know and this one is probably my favourite at the moment. Like every video I say different ones are my favourite but I think Half-Blood Prince is one of those ones that is just like constantly good. Um, I mean it's good anyway, it's Harry Potter, but this basically follows, um, there's a lot more Dumbledore in this, like Dumbledore and Harry, which is what I really love about it, um, it's a bit different um, than all the others I think. I also really like that you get to see more of the like potions thing because Snape is not the potions teacher in this one, you have uh, Professor Slughorn instead which he's one of my favourites just because he's so irritating but quite funny and I think there's some kind of sadness in this throughout because um, I won't spoil it but something really horrible happens at the end of the fifth book which then Harry then has to deal with and is kind of working his head around throughout the rest of it and so I feel like there's some sadness there and then obviously again not spoiling it but something really bad happens at the end of this book as well and um, it just makes me cry from beginning to end and uh, I love it but it's um, 607 pages so it's the shortest one I'm going to talk about today. The next one I read in September 2015 and then May of this year and it will be no surprise that this is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by JK Rowling which is the seventh and final book in the Harry Potter series. Um, my copy seems like it's lit like thinner than the other one but I think it's because I have a hard co hardcover copy of the Half of the Prince, but this one is a paperback. Um, so this one's 608 pages, so it's only one page more than the other one. Um, but yeah, I love this book. I love a good conclusion, and this one to me is just brilliantly done. Um, I think you get that kind of like anticipation throughout for kind of what's going to happen and how it's going to wrap up at the end. The end, like third of this book, is absolutely devastating. Like everything happens and you're just like what on earth is going on and why is this happening um there were some people that died and i'm like oh my god um it's really sad throughout um i really just loved this this is the only one that doesn't really have any hogwarts in it like in terms of um like classes and things because harry and hermione and ron have not gone to classes this year and i kind of missed it I'll be honest um I do like this but I think sometimes when I crave a Harry Potter book I crave the kind of Hogwarts and the kind of fun and the classes and things so this isn't always the one that I crave to read but I definitely like this one for kind of action and adventure and just the kind of ending of the story um yeah the only bit I don't like about this is the 19 years later part which is also mirrored in the fact that I didn't like the cursed child so awkward um, yeah, really liked this one, 608 pages. So number three is Daddy's Girls by Tasmina Perry, which is 612 pages long. This one I don't actually have at the moment. Um, I got rid of my copy because, as I've told you before, I don't keep books. Um, but I really liked this book. It basically um, is my third five-star read of this video, which is quite funny. Um, I This basically follows four girls whose dad is murdered and um, they are all kind of suspected and they've all got a different relationship to him and it's kind of a bit sort of confusing. Nobody's really sure what's happened or what, what's going on. Um, he's a very difficult man, their father, so I think they all could have done it and they all have motive for doing it, but it's kind of what happened and how they get through that. So I actually really liked that and I think it portrays it pretty accurately. Then I have a book which I gave one star and this is The Host by Stephanie Meyer um, and this is 620 pages. I really didn't like this book but you know what the reason I've kept it, the reason I still have this copy is because I don't want to give up on it yet. Like I feel like maybe I wasn't really in the right place for it. I really want to reread it at some point in the future and kind of see whether I still like it, still don't like it. I read The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer 
um, and loved it but that was adult fiction and I've also read Twilight which I really like too but this is very different and I'm just not sure if it was kind of the thing I was looking for at the time I read it. So this is basically about aliens and it's about these people whose kind of souls get overtaken by these aliens and it's about dealing with that I think. It's weird and it was just a bit much when I was reading it before so I've given it one star for now but I do plan on revisiting it soon not soon but sometime in the future and hopefully I'll like it more let me know what you think if you've read this like will I love it or will I hate it I know you could tell this was coming and this is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by JK Rowling which is the fourth book in the Harry Potter series and this one has 636 pages um I really liked this one um I often think this is going to be this is my favorite I'd say this is probably in second place after Half-Blood Prince because this has so many things happening in it and such a like my copy is the original one that I had and it's so old it's like not even funny but anyway basically this follows so many different things so it starts off with Harry and he then goes to the Quidditch World Cup um, where Ireland are playing Bulgaria and he goes with Ron and his family and um, they have a really good time and everything's going really well then something really bad happens then they go up to school and then there's the Triwizard Tournament which is this big tournament between these three muggle schools and there's a champion for each school and basically they do these tasks and they try and beat each other and whoever wins is like the winner of the Triwizard Tournament it hasn't happened in ages um, which is just amazing um, and then there's all this dark magic in this one and it's just really interesting it's got dragons who doesn't love dragons um yeah really liked this one i love that quidditch is really prominent in this one because i do really enjoy that and um yeah i would definitely say if you haven't if you've read the shorter ones and you're a bit sort of nervous about going into the large ones i promise you you will not regret reading this because it's really really good next up is a 640 page book and this was a house for mr biz was by vs napal and i quite liked this book i did give it a two star because it was okay which is the kind of definition that goodreads gives a two star book and um i didn't love it it's about an indian guy who is living in a house i can't remember where they live is it trinidad Oh, I can't remember it was a really long time ago I read this uh, it was like two years ago I think um, but basically it follows a man who is living with this family with his, he marries into a family basically of a massive family and they all live together there's like 50 of them or something but he's trying to like build his own house and make a living that way and I can't really remember all the particulars I remember it being quite an interesting read um, but it is a really big book but actually I don't think it was it didn't take me as long as I thought it would to read it it was actually quite fast paced enough that it was interesting I would definitely say read this um, but it might not be for you I think this is one of those books that's not for everyone next up I have a 662 page book and this one I also was not a fan of and that is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss now to be honest with you I didn't completely finish this book I have given it a one star on Goodreads just for kind of because I didn't like what I did read of it if that makes any sense um I read a good chunk of it I just didn't finish the whole thing um this is a high fantasy book so it's not something I normally read I don't pick this up for particular reasons I just don't enjoy reading them and but I've been told such good things about this and I have been really enjoying YA fantasy a lot more this year so I thought maybe I would enjoy this but I really didn't it wasn't for me it's about a man named Kvoth Kvoth I think that's how you say his name and it's about a guy who chronicles his life and it's about him telling his story to the chronicler basically and it just wasn't really my cup of tea um again I'm keeping this because I think if I read some more fantasy I might get back into this and this might be something I enjoy um but maybe if you could give me some recommendations for other fantasy books to read before I read this to sort of get me up to that sort of high fantasy level, um, I would really appreciate that. Funnily enough, the next three books are all Stephen King books. And I the first one is actually the first Stephen King book I read. And I read this in August of last year. And this one is 690 pages. So, so I didn't start with a small one. Um, this is Duma Key by Stephen King, obviously. Um, and this follows a man who goes to Duma Key after the breakdown of his relationship because he has an accident at his work and um, has his arm amputated and he has a lot of other medical problems. And so he leaves his wife because it's put a big strain on their relationship and um, he just doesn't 
he doesn't want to be with her at, the, at that moment. Anyway, then he moves to do McKee and basically he lives in a house on the beach and he can see, you know, the sea and apparently this was where these famous people have done paintings and things. And then he starts to develop a talent for painting and what he doesn't realise is that he's painting things that have happened and things that are going to happen. And so then comes this story of these paintings coming alive and doing things and things happening in the house that he's living in and it's really really good um the ending was really creepy um i don't think this is horror necessarily this is kind of more like a thriller i would say but i think stephen king's writing this was where i fell in love with his writing and i've read a lot more of his books this year but yeah this really creeped me out and i would definitely recommend it i would probably say don't read this as your first stephen king though because i don't think it's as good as a lot of his other books are i think it's good but like i gave this a four star not a five and i've given pretty much all the others he's done a five so that just kind of tells you whereabouts it is on the scale the next one is probably my favorite stephen king book that i've read so far and this is 740 pages long and it is 11 22 63 by stephen king now this is a time travel novel which i'm not normally a big fan of um, I'm actually currently reading Passenger by Alexander Bracken and I've not got far enough in it to know whether I like it yet but this is time travel so because of Stephen King I've now started reading a lot more time travel and I'm enjoying it actually um, but I never used to like that kind of thing. I mean Cursed Child again bringing it up in this video but I'm not even going there. Um, but yeah this basically follows a man who goes back in time to try to prevent the assassination of JFK in 1963 and what's great is now as well this is something that will make you laugh um, I now, on Trivial Pursuit, can answer the question, when was JFK murdered? Because it's the title of the book, 11 63 22nd of November 1963. And I know a lot more about the assassination. I didn't know anything about um, Lee Harvey Oswald or anything like that. But now I, see, I know a lot more about it because of this book. And I also am just really fascinated and loved this book. I was so in invested, even though it's like 740 pages long. I was invested every single page and just wanted to, to keep going to find out what was going to happen and I definitely want to reread this one in the future because it was so so good. Then the next one I read in September this year um, and this was a bit more of a creepy one and um, this is Salem's Lot by Stephen King and this was 751 pages. Um, I really liked this actually when me and my boyfriend went on holiday to Wales um, in October we actually watched the film of Salem's Lot and um it was so good like really really good um the the film was not great like but it was an interesting adaptation but the the book is really really good um it's basically stephen king's take on a vampire novel and i was always a bit like vampire novels to me always seem quite not childish that's probably the wrong word but sort of just not really where i'm at with my reading like not what i'm kind of looking for but this one was so good because it was so like ambiguous and it wasn't like I mean obviously once you get further into it not so much but at the start things were happening but nobody could quite work out what it was and there was lit, like whisperings and things and I just love that and again Stephen King's writing is so distinctive like I feel like I'd know it was him writing even if like no one told me it was his writing if they just gave me a book that was written by him and said guess whose writing that is and I read it I would know instantly it was him because his writing is so distinctive and it's like it's just fantastic and I absolutely love it so definitely um would recommend salem's lot then another book that i read in 2015 and this is a time to kill by john grisham which is the first book in the jake brigance series i don't know how many books are in the series this book is 752 pages long so just one page more than the last one but i really really liked this one i gave this a five star um i think basically this was the first book i read that really had race as a big part of it so um I read this before I read um, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, which also is a great book and it's in a very similar vein to this. And basically A Time to Kill is about a black man accused of murdering a white girl. Similar to To Kill a Mockingbird actually. And it just, there's a lot of racial tension between um, different people. Um, there's even part that like the KKK are part of this because it's set in America at that sort of time. And this was just really inspiring like inspiring to read is that the right word like it just really told me a lot like it, it taught me a lot as well and um it made me think like i know that we haven't come like completely like we're still there are still a lot of problems about race and about many other things um but i feel like we have moved forward a little bit at least from the kind of 1940s or whatever like i feel like we have at least 
moved forward to the point where I mean in some places obviously it's still terrible but I really really liked this book um, it was really important I think to read and I would love to continue with John Gresham's books because I actually haven't read any of his others although I'm pretty sure I own a couple so but yeah I, I really want to read more because this was really really good and also it's like a legal book it's like about a lawyer and um, it's one of my favourite things so then I have a book that I only finished in November so I shall link my November wrap up below um, but this is A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin and this is the first book in the Game of Thrones series I think there's seven books now but I think there's more coming or something. It's 780 pages long so it is a bit of a slog but I actually listened to this on audiobook um, and I found it much easier to follow because there are so many different characters in this. So basically it follows a world where there is a throne, um, an iron throne and the people are basically fighting to be the king of that throne um, and it's there's so many different people and there's people fighting and lots and lots of things happening um, but I still felt like it made sense even though there was like things happening everywhere you kind of didn't know where to look but it was really really good I really really enjoyed it and I would say um, I am going to continue the rest of the series but I, I think I will continue an audiobook because in my eyes the audiobook was easier to follow than when I read tried to read it just from the book itself. Next up I have the biggest Stephen King book I've ever read and this is Under the Dome which is 880 pages long and yes that's massive but I also think it's one of my favourites. I think 112263 and Under the Dome are my two favourite Stephen King books that I've read so far and I think it's because I like how he researches it and he kind of really goes into detail. I feel like if you'd read if you read it it really comes across as like almost like non-fiction although it's like obviously a most fictional like storyline it would never actually happen but it's so like detailed and there's so many different things to it that I do think that it couldn't like it might come across as being so like real to life um but basically this follows a town where this big dome appears kind of out of nowhere um above the town and nobody can get in and nobody can get out and then it's basically the people in the town and it's the politics of the town and how they tried to deal with what's happening and about how they obviously can't get food and things in because that it's literally shut off um you know and it's about obviously there are deaths and things happen because people are just rebelling and then there's you know whether who should be in charge and all this stuff and then you get the people on the outside their perspective and you get the people on the inside and it's just fascinating i think i watched a bit of the tv series and i'll be honest i wasn't a big fan of that so i would definitely recommend the book over the TV series but um, I really really liked this I thought the storyline was great and um, I think even though it was a massive book it was definitely worth it and then we have the biggest Harry Potter book of the series and this is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by JK Rowling this is the fifth book in the Harry Potter series um, this cover kind of annoys me because this is the only book I have the adult cover of because I had obviously the normal covers when I was at home and I lived at home with my parents but then when I moved out they obviously kept their copy and so I kind of got my copy from charity shops and things so I have the adult cover of this book which upsets me slightly but it's okay because my, the books aren't even together on my shelf they're like out they're in colors as you can see so um yeah I'm I'm okay with it so this one um is some people's least favorite of the series because it almost feels like Harry is just annoyed throughout the whole thing like he he has a very negative mindset but it makes sense and I can understand why he has that mindset and I think it's explained really well and I do under but I do understand why people some people are not happy with that this basically follows the order of the phoenix which is a secret society that was created when Voldemort was in power and it was basically against Voldemort and now obviously Voldemort is back they are bringing the order of the phoenix back again and um, yeah I love this I think it's so nice to see them all together again and to see the relationships that you didn't see in other books um, really really loved this one also just to say that's 956 pages long which is a lot but it doesn't feel like it with Harry Potter it really doesn't and then I have the biggest book that I have read and this was in my recent books I want to reread um, video which I'll link below as well um, but this is Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. <laughs> it's huge. This book is 1,463 pages long and I have read it. I'm quite proud of that. However, I can see from my Goodreads that, which is just over here, I started this on May the 4th, 2014 and I finished it on August the 10th, 2014, which really just sums up how long this book took me to read. 
literally what's that may june july august oh, and it was like three months which i thought it was about that to be honest and i have said before i wasn't really reading a lot back then so i suppose meh like it makes sense i guess um i really like this book i don't i imagine most people know what this is about because it's a massive thing but this basically follows the french revolution and it's about this guy named Jean Valjean who was a convicted criminal who is um, being searched for by a man named Javert and um, it's about what happens. It also has Fontaine and her little daughter Cosette in it. Um, I also think that the musical to this is amazing. I've seen the film musical on Netflix which I definitely would recommend although beware like you will cry at the end. Um, it was brilliant and this book is so heavy I can't even hold it up. <sighs> anyway, love this, 1,400 pages. So there you have it, there are the 15 books that I have read that are over 600 pages long. I would love to know what books you've read. I do have other books on my shelf ready to read. I have The Bronze Horseman, I have It by Stephen King, I have I have Breaking Dawn, um, I have so many different books but um, yeah so I just wanted to let you know what books I've read, let me know what you want to read or what, I, what you think I should read um, that's over 600 pages because I do like to read big books and until next time I shall see you in my next video. Bye guys!